Hi, MFI. What an incredible honor to be here at the Just Jesus Conference with you. You are such an incredible group of pastors and leaders. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Frank, for this honor. I admire and esteem you so incredibly much. I had the privilege of being at a leadership intensive with Pastor Frank a couple weeks ago, and I was again reminded of how excellently, how intentionally, how Jesusly Pastor Frank lives life. And five minutes with him makes you better. Three hours made me so much better. So just honor you and your leadership, Pastor Frank. And honor you pastors. I know this has been a year, right? 2020 for the whole world has been a year, but for us as pastors, we're having to innovate. We're having to recreate. We're having to refigure out how we do this whole thing we call church. And I just got to tell you, you're killing it. You, you figured out how to be Joel Osteen on a dime. And man, am I now just in awe so much of how he talks to a camera so incredibly anointedly man we all need a little bit more joel osteen in our life i am really honored today because i think god wants to speak to our hearts and speak to us in this moment a couple weeks ago uh, two of our beloved pastors passed away pastor carlos and pastor danny bonilla and our our hearts go out to their wives pastor mary and pastor giselle our hearts are with you in this season. And as I was just contemplating what it meant for me personally uh, that Pastor Danny had passed away, he has been a consistent, audible voice of God in my life. I, I think of how many times I've heard the word preached through him. I think of how many times he's prophesied over me. And I, I can't help but think, wow, God, this year, really, you're taking Pastor Danny from us this year? Don't we need a Pastor Danny voice in our world like never before? And, and just as I was just pouring out my heart to God and, and thinking about what Pastor Danny had meant to me and my husband personally, I just felt like God reminded me of something that he told me early on in this whole thing, this whole COVID world. And he said, it's time for the Samuels. And he just, he stirred it in my spirit and he's like, it's time for the Samuels and, and MFI pastors, I know the story of Samuel. It's a familiar story, but I believe sometimes we need to hear the familiar to be reminded of our true identity. And I believe God wants to speak to your spirit and he wants to speak to my spirit today. It's time for the Samuels. We're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3 and there time period is really a lot like our season right now. It was a chaotic time. It was a moment actually where anarchy was happening. It was this transition moment where God was getting ready to do something new, but he hadn't quite done something new. And if you looked at the landscape, it was a barren time. It was an empty time. And, and if you remember Samuel himself, he actually was the product of a woman, Hannah, who was barren and, and she went to God year after year saying, God, will you come through with a miracle for me? God, will you give me a child? And it seemed like God wasn't answering. It seemed like God wasn't listening. It seemed like God wasn't acting, but then God comes in this miraculous story and he gives Hannah with a son named Samuel. And in that gift, she knew that this child didn't belong to her. And so she said, I'm gonna give this child to God. And so she literally takes her beautiful baby boy and she gives him to Eli, the priest. Can you imagine as a mom, this story is so incredibly difficult for me to imagine giving one of my precious sons to an old guy priest to raise, but she does this. And it actually says in 1 Samuel chapter three, it says that the boy Samuel, he served the Lord in Eli's presence. And it said, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare and prophetic visions were not right widespread. Another way of saying that actually was that the word of the Lord was rare and it had not yet broken out. It had not yet broken through. See, their time period was so much like ours and they needed a Samuel and we need a Samuel. We actually need lots of Samuels. It's time for the Samuels. See, it's time for the Samuels who've been being developed 
in the barrenness. You thought you were just going through this season of just doing church in the dark and doing church out there in the wild and, and not even knowing, are our people still watching? We're watching views, but are they even engaged? Are they on their phones while they're watching service? Are they making breakfast while they're watching service? Are they driving in their car? Like, are our people still connected? See, we've been in this barren season. And when we look at the cultural landscape, we have to ask ourselves, whoa, God, are you listening? Are you there? It's felt barren. It's felt void. And I'm reminded in Genesis, it actually says that the world, it was, it was empty. It was void. And that actually God was hovering over the surface of the earth. He was hovering. And then what does it say? And then it says, God said, let. And then all of creation exploded from that let. Can I tell you, it's time for the Samuels who've been being developed in the barrenness. They've been being developed in the void. They've been being developed in the empty. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has been hovering over our hearts, pastors. I believe the Holy Spirit has been hovering over our churches. I'm just seeing pictures of each one of you in your Sunday services, preaching to an empty room. I'm seeing pictures of you pastors in your services. Their, their worship is going and nobody's in there, but you're raising your hands. You're worshiping your guts out. And can I tell you that that barren season, that empty season hasn't gone unnoticed by God. And the Holy Spirit has been hovering over that space. And the Holy Spirit has been hovering over you with a great let of God. And it's time for the Samuels because because in that let of God, what we're going to find out is we're going to find out that God has been preparing a word. He's been hovering over you with a word, not just for your church, but he's been hovering over you with a word for our culture. He's been hovering over you with a word for our country. The great let of God is about to be released in the barrenness. And it goes on and it says this, one day Eli, whose eyesight was failing, he was lying in his usual place before the lamp of God had gone out. But Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. And I love this. When we look back at chapter two, we discover that Samuel actually, as this little kid, he's wearing his ephod given to him from his mama. He's wearing those little baby priestly robes. Just think, how cute was he? And it says that he actually was ministering before the Lord at this young age. And here we have him and he's hanging out in the house of God. He's hanging out in the presence of God. Can I tell you that it's time for the Samuels. It's time for those who've been developed in the barrenness, but it's also time for the Samuels who've been dwelling in the presence of God. Yeah, I see you, pastor. I see you. You've been getting up early every day. You haven't let your routines get mixed up. You've been spending time in the word. I see you, pastor, who've been on your knees every day crying out to the Lord, saying, God, I don't know how I'm supposed to preach into a camera. I don't know how I'm supposed to talk to people but you've been there. You've been close. You've been walking as a friend of God. And I'm telling you, it's time for the Samuels who've been dwelling in the house of God, who've been dwelling in his presence, who've been saying, God, I don't want my life to be fed by the news. I don't want my life to be fed by culture. I don't want my life to be fed by conspiracy theories. I don't want my life to be fed by politics. I don't want my life to be fed by what I see on Instagram. Holy Spirit, come I want my life to be fed by your presence. I want to know you, our hearts, saying along with the psalmist, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Oh, we long, we yearn for you. And it's time for the Samuels because remember the Holy Spirit, he's been hovering over the barrenness. The Holy Spirit has been hovering over the void and he's been hovering there and he's been seeing you dwelling in his his presence and this whole dwelling in his presence it's actually been acting as an incubator for what God is about to do next 
Uh, a couple days ago, my son, you know, we live in this great homeschool world and he's like, hey mom, I need lima beans. I need lima bean seeds. And I'm like, okay, where do we get lima bean seeds from? Your dad. So dad, he's on the way home from the fire station and I'm like, hey babe, we need lima bean seeds. And so he goes to where you always buy seeds. Safeway, and he gets a big giant bag of lima beans. Now, number one, I did not know lima beans were this big. They're huge, they're, they're this big. And they take these lima beans and they put them in a cup of water. And I'm like, what is that gonna do? You can't grow lima beans in a cup of water. But this cup of water, it became an incubator for the lima beans to begin to open. And this morning, my son is taking the lima beans that we got at the lima bean seed store, Safeway, and he's showing me, he's like, mom, look. And I saw that as these lima beans had been soaked in the water, something incredible began to happen. Inside the lima bean, a sprout was beginning to be released. Now, my son, he took these lima beans that had been in the incubator of the water and he put them into an even deeper incubator called paper towels and he laid them all out in these moist paper towels and he puts them into a Ziploc bag and apparently in a couple days, we're gonna be able to open this bag and we are gonna see sprouts on all the lima beans so that we can then plant them. See, you thought you were just doing devotions. You thought you were just studying the words. You thought you were just praying. But can I tell you, pastors, as you have been dwelling, as I have been dwelling in the presence of God, something incredible has begun to happen. We have been in the incubator of the Holy Spirit. We've been in the incubator of God. And his word is beginning to sprout inside of us. His word is beginning to shoot out of us, a word that we didn't even know was there. We didn't even know that God was wanting to say this, but he's wanting to speak to his world. And he's been using this incubator of his presence to get us ready for what he wants to say. The story is going to go on and it's going to have this whole series of Samuel and God and Eli going back and forth where God is calling to Samuel and he's going to call to Samuel three times and he's going to say, Samuel. And Samuel's going to run to Eli thinking it's Eli. And then Eli, being the wise leader that he is, he's going to tell Samuel, hey, I got to tell you something. It's not me calling you. It's God. And when you hear God speak, this is what I want you to say. Here am I. I. And can I tell you, I think that's what we've all been doing in this season. I think it's time for the people who've been hearing the voice of God. And sometimes we're like, God, is that you? Is it you speaking to me? But we've been saying, God, here am I. I don't even know what it looks like. I don't even know what it looks like to do church in the wild like we've been doing. I don't even know what it looks like to have people register. I don't know what it looks like for people to wear masks, but this is what I know, God. Here am I. And can I tell you, in that yieldedness, in that here am I, God is getting ready to reveal things to you that no eye has seen and no ear has heard. And so it's time. It's time for the Samuels. The story goes on and and God's going to download to Samuel what he's about to do. And, and this is a hard story because here is Eli who actually has given his life to the service of God. But, but his sons have brought corruption into the priesthood. And, and he himself, it says that his eyes have grown dim and, and he's maybe eaten too much and he's gotten really comfortable. And so God is actually going to put an end to the priesthood as they've known it, and he's gonna do something new. And here he is telling this little kid who's been trained, who's been apprenticed by Eli, he's giving him this word. And it's a heavy word. And so Samuel, he doesn't run back to Eli. You would think he would run back to Eli, but he doesn't. He, he lays there, it says, until morning. And then he gets up and he opens the doors to the Lord's house. 
And see, I think that this right here is a prophetic word to the church. I think it's a prophetic word to pastors in this hour. It's time for the Samuels. It's time for those who've been developing in the barrenness. It's time for those who've been dwelling in the presence, who've been letting the presence of God be an incubator that God has been, he's been actually hovering over them with his word and he's getting ready to release a let of God. And can I tell you, it's time for the Samuels who open the doors to the breakout God wants to bring. See, God wants to bring a new era. God wants to bring a breakout to the church. God wants to bring a breakthrough to the church. And it's time for the Samuels who've been sitting under, who've been sitting under the barrenness, who've been sitting under the void, who've been clinging to the presence of God. It's time for those Samuels. It's time for those who are destined to open the breakout. Yeah, it's you. You're destined to open the breakout. Yeah, it's me. I'm destined to open the breakout. See, it's time for the Samuels. Earlier this year, my, my husband and I, we had moved out of our home and we're living with my in-laws and had just been learning to live in the country where we were building a house. And, and one day my in-laws were out of town. My husband was on shift and things started going crazy in our house. Things started popping. We started seeing smoke places. Vents were blowing ash. We didn't know what was going on. And so uh, I called my husband who also acts as 911 and I call him and I'm like, babe, what should we do? And he's like, well, you need to look around the house because that sounds really crazy and strange. And so we go downstairs to where we were living and my son, my youngest son, I don't have my contacts in, I can't see. He's like, mom, there is a fire. And I'm like, there is not a fire. And he's like, mom, there is a fire. And in the room that we had been living in, there's everything is just on fire. And, you know, we lost a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that we cared about. But for me, the thing that just hit my heart was I lost my Bibles with all my highlights. I lost my study books with all my highlights. I lost sermon notes that I had been writing for years because I like to handwrite my notes. And, and I was so sad because I'm like, I can't get back those revelations. I can't get back those encounters with God. And I felt like the Holy Spirit just said to my heart, behold, I'm doing something new. Can you see it? And I was like, what? And he's like, behold, I'm doing something new. Can't you see it? And I just even believe for us as pastors, behold, God is doing something new. And it's time for the Samuels who've been sitting under the barrenness, who've been sitting under the void, who've been hanging out in the presence of God. It's time for the Samuels to, who are destined to open up the new thing God wants to do. It's time for the Samuels to go to the front doors of the church and push them wide open and say, okay, God, we're ready for the new era you want to bring. Okay, God, we're ready for the new thing you want to do in this hour. Okay, God, we're ready. We're in. Come on. The let of God is about to be loosed on the earth. The let of God is about to be loosed on your church, on your home. The let of God is about to be loosed on this country like never before. And it's time for the Samuels because see, God needed Samuel to open those doors to usher in the new era. God needs you and God needs me to be those who open the doors and usher in the new era. It's time. I'm reminded of the verse in Haggai chapter two, and it says this once more in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations so that the treasures of all the nations will come and I will fill this house with my glory, 
says the Lord of armies. The silver and gold belong to me. This is the declaration of the Lord of armies. The final glory of this house will be greater than the first, says the Lord of armies. And I am here to tell you, and I'm here to tell my spirit that what God is doing in this hour is a new thing. It's a fresh thing. That the glory of the church, it's not dimming. It's not fading. The church isn't headed to be non-existent. The church is headed to thrive. The church is headed to shine. The church is headed to triumph. The church is headed for victory. And the final glory of this house, the church, it's going to be greater than anything we've ever seen. And God would say to us that it's not the same glory. Don't look for the same church. Don't look for the same outcomes. Don't try the same things because I am doing something new. Don't you see? it and I've even called you and I've anointed you and I've graced you in this hour to be those who are Samuels who open up the new thing I want to do. And so I'm calling you pastor and I'm calling my heart and I'm saying to my heart in this hour, Jerusha, do you see the new thing I'm doing? Do you perceive it? Are you in on it? Because God is about to release and God is about to launch a let like he did at creation. He's about about to do a let like he did when he said, let my kingdom come, let my will be done. God is about to loose a let in his church like never before. And he's been hovering and he's been moving and he's been healing to get us ready for this moment. It's time for the Samuels. It's time for those who've been developed by barrenness. It's time for those who've been dwelling in the presence. And it's time for those who've been destined to break out. And I'm calling us in this hour. God needs you. He needs what is in you. He needs what he's put inside of you. He needs the very word that he's put and shaped and crafted in you. He needs that word to be released in this hour. And so it's time. It's time for those who open a new era for the church. It's time for those who open a new way to live in God's presence. It's time for those who have a word from God. It's time for those who use that word from God to shape empires and histories and nations and the future. It's time for those. It's time for Samuels who point the way to not just a king, but they point the way to the king. And just like a Samuel we're going to discover in the New Testament as we continue to read, they say, behold the new thing God is doing. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the King. It's time. It's time for the Samuels. It's time for you.